Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Hope you're doing great in Jesus. I want to talk to us about uh, the light doctrine and a little tract. It's called Steps Back to Pentecost. And basically, it's, it's kind of a sister doctrine to the light doctrine, and it's that the church was lost through the Middle Ages. Now, a lot of times when you say, do you believe in the light doctrine? Somebody will say, oh no, I don't believe in the light doctrine. What they mean by that is people still have to come through Jesus Christ, which is good. They don't believe Muslims, Buddhists, and all of this uh, are going to make heaven. But they would say that after the first century, and a lot of times they use the seven churches of Revelation to justify this, that the church was lost, that there was no church. And a lot of it has to do with an ignorance literally of church history when I say ignorance I don't mean that necessarily in a negative term except my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge they're taken into captivity for lack of knowledge but they would say that the absence of definitive proof of a church in the Middle Ages would be uh, definitive for them that there wasn't a church and that the church was lost so it would go something like this I'll show this to you you have a first century church and then you would have what's known as the Dark Ages. And then you would have a restored, let me do this differently here, a restored church. And so this is kind of how it would look. And that's why it's called Steps Back to Pentecost. And please excuse my atrocious artistic abilities. Uh, God did not give that to me or my mom beat me when I drew on the walls with crayons as they say in psychology that you will no longer have artistic expression. My little great niece did that recently, drew on the wall and I said I hope my niece didn't beat her or uh, punish her to, she doesn't beat her, but uh, punish her too uh, severely. So it would be the restored church here so then they would say you know it was lost you had the uh, Ephesian church the Ephesus church would be the church and then the church gradually began to be you had persecution in Smyrna again this is the seven churches of Revelation which I do not believe are emblematic of church age I think we got that from Schofield I think it's totally erroneous I think we it causes us to miss that there were seven literal churches there that we can learn seven literal things from because i don't think the church was lost in the middle ages because the gates of hell can't prevail against the church the body of christ it just couldn't happen and so they would say you know luther started back steps to pentecost then calvin then knox then uh Let's do Wesley, Alexander Campbell, um, and then they would do Parham, you know, Zeusa Street, and then Arroyo Seco camp meeting. And they would do this like, and so they would be just like totally ignorant that uh, Urshan, Andrew Urshan was baptizing people in Jesus' name in 1911, a couple years before Aurora Seco, and saw it as part of the new birth in John 3, 5. So this is kind of a corollary to the light doctrine. This is something that is akin to the light doctrine, and uh, it would still be incorrect. It's kind of like an apostolic version of the light doctrine. So when people, you, you know, you can ask apostolics, do you believe the light doctrine? They say no, but they believe this steps back to Pentecost thing. And uh, but if you study. Like Luther was well aware of people who baptized in Jesus' name. Calvin had interaction with Michael Servetus. Um, Mino Simmons was getting baptized in Jesus' name with the Anabaptist. Uh, during the time, you know, the 1600s, you had General Baptist, according to Brother Weiser, who's done great things, getting baptized in Jesus' name, people getting the Holy Ghost. And William Penn believing in the oneness of God and uh, most all Quakers before 1700 you have somebody in Philadelphia in 1729 I think it was getting 10 stripes for baptizing in Jesus name 
And then before the 1900s, you would have Alexander Campbell and you would have Barton Stone. Um, in many instances, baptizing in Jesus' name and maybe receiving the Holy Ghost or at least some of their followers because of Cain Ridge and the amazing revivals, the Irvingites getting the Holy Ghost, you know, speaking with tongues in England in the 1830s and all these books that are being found from the 1800s of uh, people believing in the oneness of God and uh, anonymous treatise of an apostolical Christian and such as this. So, uh, you know, we tend to take, and, and I call it, and I hate to say this, a lazy intellectual view of history in that we just primarily people hit the mountaintops of history, the main figures. Um, it's called the uh, great men, great events view of history or some something akin to that people to have different things and so what they'll do is they'll hit all the high tops and think that that's history but there's micro history in the valleys the things that are happening the many tens of thousands of cities around the world um, even during the great Armenian uh, and it's not persecutions at that point it wasn't before the Turkish persecutions, but um, I remember Demas Shikarion talking about, I think it was either he or his grandfather or father walked by the Azusa Street Mission and the Armenians, they said they were great migrations of Armenians and they spoke in tongues by like the hundreds of thousands. And so when either he or one of his, his forebears were walking by Azusa Street Mission and heard them speak in tongues, said, that's what I heard in the Armenians them speaking in tongues. I know like uh, Arnold has mentioned the Thronraki, who evidently spoke in tongues. Of course, the Bogomils, the Priscillianist, these would have been Acts 238 believers by and large. So the church was never lost. And so this steps back to Pentecost as a corollary to um, the light doctrine is to be rejected just as well as the full-fledged light doctrine that is if somebody just responds to animism and that's all they knew then they get to go to heaven and that's really big believe it or not in the catholic catechism of 1992 that basically they say you know witch doctors and voodoo practitioners and all of these people that just because they walk in the light they knew they get to make it in and uh anyhow God bless you. Let's stick with the word of God. It is a straight way. It is a narrow way, but it is the only way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And his, his great love, he's, he's made it available to all people. And that is a great thing. So God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.